All right, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another month in uh, the Vertex Idol Alliance. As you see here, we've got our next live stage in five days scheduled. But of course, that's going to be, what, Saturday, I think, officially? Yeah, so we've got Friday first. Uh, and of course, that means uh, we're going to uh, our TV tapings first. And I think that's what we're going to cover in this video is the TV tapings for Vertigo and that first show um, for Idol Fight Project, the first live stage. Those are going to be the, the events that we cover. And then after that, we'll have probably two live stage events plus Damnation. So we're setting up with the uh, we're setting up with um, our TV tapings now. Made some decent money. I'm sure we'll spend it all here once we uh, run a run a pay per view. As you can see, the last time we ran our uh, actual broadcasted event, uh, we lost eleven hundred dollars. But I think we could probably get that back. I think we'll probably do pretty okay. We'll see what happens. But we need to get to Friday and see if anything happens minus three dollars in 2020 <laughs> did that happen i think it did i remember there was a month where we were like right there and we had just not we had just barely like not made the money yeah there was two different instances in 2021 where we lost 18 dollars and then we lost two dollars so we really we really cut that close uh, we'll go ahead to this. Did that happen here at all? Did we have anything like that? We lost $3. That's, there was another one. Yeah, there was one here. We lost $3 and we made $14. Uh, oh, was there anything here? Masato Tanaka retires. TJ Perkins and Rosemary are going to have a feud. Uh, of course, Sukasa Fujimoto won the uh, IW19. I don't think that's the, the full one. I think that's like their mid-card belt. Uh, Isaiah Cassidy with IWA Mid-South. It looks like that's about it. Nothing else, really. You mentioned yesterday people can't, objectively can't criticize your TW. <laughs> of course I was making a joke, for fuck's sake. I know. <laughs> uh, there we go. Let's see. Oh. Mm, nothing, nothing catches my eye here. So we're basically going straight to Thursday. That's always nice. Get that done. Get that out of the way. I hate having so many names in in my little uh, chatty here. Makes it look like there's quite a few people, but realistically, there's a, it's a six, but there's like seventeen sitting here. It's kind of annoying because I see like Discord for streamers and dis. What what is this? What is this? Discord streamer community is in here. Network, network, network. And yeah, it's just weird bots, it seems like. I mean, there's actual people here, obviously, but then you get but then you get but then you get all these different like bots and other other crap in here. Oh god. Hang on one second here. <laughs> What pack of quartz are you using? I'm using my own. I need to let them know that. It's like, ha, I made them myself. And I don't I don't have the, I don't think I have my quartz that I made available. Uh Aaron Stevens won the NWA World Television title. Uh let's see here. Isn't that what VSK or is that a different person? Vincent. Isn't he with uh what's what's a who's it's um Bennett and Taven? Isn't he the other guy that's with Bennett and Taven? Yeah. Uh, booking plans. Uh, not much, not much going on there. So we're going to Friday. 
He was? Okay. He isn't now. <laughs> Man, I don't know how good he is. I don't think I've seen him wrestle, but if fucking Tony Khan took Bennett and Taven and left him, or is he maybe in, in Ring of Honor and I just don't, by himself, and I just don't even... He gets it. Eddie Edwards and Tyler Black of my ROH Tag Team Champs. They're finally losing the house. Motor City Machine Guns. Nice. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, Doug Williams is retiring. AEW signing new people. Scorpio Sky is retiring. All right. There's a signing. He just started appearing in new ROH. Okay. That's good. Uh, all right. Well, nothing big, nothing major. I mean, I guess I shouldn't worry too much about that because, hey, it's not good news. It's not like some random thing where we're going to get some like awesome person who like walked out on like their job because they got pissed. And then we're going to get some awesome new person that we can sign. But, I mean, nothing horrific happened either, so. Um, I do know, depending on how much this month costs me, because this month is going to be, I, I guess I didn't mention that this month is going to be a litmus test. Um, obviously I can't hit it right now, but the litmus test is $15,000. How much money am I going to have at the end of this month? Cause I'm going to try to book a very, obviously I'm not going to worry too much about how much I'm spending, but I'm going to try to just book a prototypical month with a an event and as you can see we lost about eleven hundred dollars if we can kind of break even this month um i'm probably going to build a venue i was gonna originally save up i was uh, i mean obviously it's been a long way going but um a big part of what i wanted to do i looked into the investments and i think it costs twelve thousand dollars to create a 500 seat building. And then you can actually upgrade that building in game. Like, you know, I think like if you want to add a certain level of capacity, you can actually build it up. And that's something I want to do is actually like continue building that up. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to do is originally spend money on getting like my own 500 seat building. Cause more than likely for this, I mean, my tapings only gather, what, 137 people. Uh, my last big event brought in 313. More than likely, it's about what we're going to have for a little while. We can still sell out 500 seats without having to move up, honestly. But um, 137 for TV tapings. Oh, now you need to see if you can upgrade Universal Studios. Oh, yeah, you can. If if your company owns it, look into your investments into venues you own because there's an option. And I didn't even know this. I literally didn't even know this until I looked at it. You can upgrade your venue. That I, I don't even remember them saying anything like that. But then again, that was like three years ago when they were doing the dev diaries. But yeah, you can upgrade your venue by like, you know, 100 seats at a time. I thought that was awesome. So, yeah, I, I think I'm going to continue doing that. Um, obviously, I'm probably just going to keep it fairly low for a while, even just selling out at the 500 to 600 mark, uh, because I do want to make my own broadcaster, just some internet commercial broadcaster where I have my own stream. It's commercial, so I can actually make money on ads and just continue running that and building it up, kind of like what I have in WMMA. Um, where I just, and, and then of course the, the things in this game are actually in here to upgrade, uh, inside the game rather than me having to bust out the calculator and see how much it would cost. The thing is the upfront cost for that is I think if I were to do just Japan, it's 110,000. And I think just for America, and this is for tiny, uh, internet commercials. So it's about as, it, it's not even traditional, it's internet and it's tiny, so it's like as cheap as you can actually physically get for America. It's like 135000 I don't know when I'm actually going to get there, but I figured we'll at least run venues. We'll at least get like a venue where we can save some money. 
and just continue going in into it. And we'll see what happens eventually when it comes to uh, making some money. So, yeah, that's that's my plan is to use these investments, get a new, get my own. Uh, and of course, when you create your own like here, like I'm going to do here again, 137 people hiring cost, of course, cut down by 40 percent. So if I do like 500, it would probably normally cost me about five, six hundred dollars. Cost that down to be a little bit more. Importance is immediately up to 100 and hotbed is a yes. So that gives you some serious attendance boost to all of your shows. So that's another big one. So that's a that's a that's another big thing there is having that high importance and that hotbed, um, which will probably be an attendance boost in numbers. It should be. All right. So now that I've done all of that, let's do. Oh, I got an incident. Hopefully, it's a good one. I don't do negative people, so we'll see. Zachary Wentz, he set up a pancake station, started cooking for anyone who wanted them. Interesting. All right. I I never got around to this. I need to figure out what I'm going to put in my default matches. I need to get a nice set of default matches sitting in here. For right now, it's pretty okay because I don't go into this well very much. Of like, but but like the ones I usually do, like your steel cage, hardcore ladder, something like that, uh, would be nice to uh, put in here as well. Uh, let's see here. Tate twins, flip forever. That's eleven minutes total. You know, I in the back of my mind, I had a joke like that. And I just left it alone. <laughs> Cause I know obviously he's joking. Like he 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 did it as a yeah, you know, you know, whatever. I think people have already come to their conclusions on shit, so not even worth talking about. At least he still gets some work with Revolver. At least he still can do the Rascals thing there with uh Trey Miguel. <laughs> Uh, open decisive finish. Perfect. Actually, if it's going to go nine minutes, you might as well just uh, go all out. There you go. All right. Three minutes. Angle. Drop that in. Uh, all right, let's see here. This has got AR Fox. This has got Brandon Tate. This has got Brent Tate. And this has got Andrew Everett. And this has got Eli Everfly. So entertainment, they're going to sell this. Successes for them. Defeats for them. <clears throat> Calling out Mike Bailey. He's going to be off screen, but I want to help use it to build him a little bit. There you go. All right. Next match. Do do. And drop that there. So I don't have to zip around. That is nine minutes. Drew Parker. Should it be open mm, for a seven minute match? I mean, ah, eh, fuck it. Uh, let's see. I mean, we could, we could bring, uh, obviously Darius Lockhart would probably be ringside for this. So we'll pay him to be out there as well. All right. Uh, we got three minutes for this. And that is Ryan Davidson with Drew Parker. And I think that's about it. So uh, let's see here. Acting and selling. Minor success, minor defeat. Boom. We got another angle. Drop that in. That is two minutes. 
It's got the Neo body guys. So we're doing Jesse Goddard's. We're doing Caesar Bononi. And we're doing Preston Vance. You know what? I want to put scripts on all of them because I'm pretty sure they're not good at. That's like one thing I remember is I'm pretty sure they're not good at uh, improv. So we're going to go ahead and throw scripts on them. All right. Let's see. We got six man tag action. We got uh, Neo Body Guys along with uh, Jesse Goddard's. And we've got the Regal Twins along with Effie. Improv. <laughs> I do. Jack Nicholson, 85, looks disheveled. He's seen for the first time in two years. I didn't know Jack Nicholson was 85. I didn't know he hasn't been seen for two years. Or has he just been hiding? Like, what? what has he been doing? I don't remember... <laughs> Did you just not? Uh... Oh, I picked Jesse Goddard's twice. Whoops, that's supposed to be Caesar. There you go. All right, uh, do that. Hey, Messiah, how's it going? Uh, you know, body guys. There we go. We're doing 12 minutes on that. Let's do... Let's do Goddard's getting the win. Make it open match. Du, du, du. Take advantage of pre-show can really help. Yeah. I don't think that happens for TV tapings, though. Not as far as I know. I'd have to look into that. I mean, it's probably pretty easy to look down and just be like, hey, you got a tainted win. Cheating. They do some cheating. And uh, I think that's about it. Boom. Uh, improv Weekly Club, yeah. <laughs> what other cringe high school club? I was in Gamer Club. Gamers Club in high school. It was just once a week we sat and played games. Pretty much just Smash Brothers. One second. There we go. We had sort of a impromptu club with me and a few friends that was basically a Magic the Gathering club. It was unofficial, but we'd show up most days, mornings before uh, Lee Club and <laughs> Cameras don't have sex, trade or other. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. I'll do that, that. Drop it in. That is one minute. That is with the end. So we've got Odinson. We've got Pero. And let's see here. You know what? They're talking about Calvin Tankman and Trey Lamar. We'll bring them in there just so they can get a rub off of it. Because we're building up their match. Since they are the uh, coming challengers, there we go. One. Let's see here. A C V. Uh, let's see here. Eddie Edwards coming out to talk. Ty Ray. All right. Uh, I guess he's using his charisma, but he's actually speaking. So we'll neutral that and we'll minor success that. That's basically what that comes out to be. Uh, let's see here. Main event. And that's Ty Ray and Tim Donst. I haven't had them in a lot of matches against each other, right? No, I technically only had them in one match, one one-on-one -on -one match, and that was September of last year. So we're pretty good. We book men in tights tussling. Obvious as gay as Glee Club. 
My favorite was when I saw people. I remember when uh, WWE used to, uh, when they had like Xavier Woods and Sasha and them uh, talking about like Crunchyroll and advertising Crunchyroll. And there was just this weird, like, there was this weird heat between uh, anime fans and wrestling fans where they both thought they were above the other. It's like, oh, I watch high value anime. This is just male. This is just weird soap opera fake bullshit. And all the wrestling fans are like, this is actually athletic. It's not it's not girls in dresses and trying to be cute and all that stuff. <laughs> it's just it's like, shut up. You're both dweebs. And if you like both like me, you're a giga dweeb. Uh, Victor open decisive finish. That sounds about right. Boom. Angle. We're doing that. We're doing that. We're doing one minute. We're doing Heath. Uh, JT done. And they're going to have a conundrum. 60 minutes. Boom. Just jerk off to either one. I mean, what? <laughs> All right, 60 minutes. I think we're going. All right, here we are for Vertigo Attack episode number 29. We're going to start off hot with the Tate Twins and Flip Forever. Going balls to the wall for eight and a half minutes. Good wrestling, decent reaction. Brandon Tate super kicks Andrew Everett and gets the win for the Tate Twins. Just a nice, easy win for them there. As uh, I believe we had already set up uh, the three-way for Damnation. Yes, we did. So, bit of a tune-up there for them. But uh, of course, uh, Flip Forever not a uh, not a weak team. Gave them gave them a you know they tried their best. Couldn't make it work, but that's fine. And uh, Tate Twins end up getting the win. It was after this point though that Ar Fox came down. And started stomping on Everett and Eli, and, and, uh, Eli and uh, Tate Twins join in on them. And uh, AR Fox grabs a microphone. He insults Mike Bailey. I believe Bailey, uh, Bailey had some words for him last week, and he insults him. And, uh, you know, basically says that it uh, sounds like he wants a fight with AR Fox. And, hey. You know what? We should have that at Damnation. So he calls him out for it. We'll see what happens as it looks like the challenge has been laid down from AR Fox to Speedball Mike Bailey. Uh, we've got our next match. Drew Parker taking on Timmy Lou Retton. It goes over just over six and a half minutes. Flying foot stomp by Drew Parker in a decent enough match there. 45, not too bad from Drew Parker. Uh, especially considering he's he hasn't been uh, he hasn't been around all that long, and uh, putting on a great match there, getting the win. Uh, unfortunately, pretty much afterwards, Ryan Davidson comes in with a chair, clocks him right over the head with the chair. Uh, Drew Parker is now busted open, and he starts bleeding uh, on his face a little bit, and uh, Davidson grabs Parker's hair. Gets in his face and yells at him about uh, the disrespect that Parker showed to him last week. And uh, just leaves him laying there. And uh, as he heads to the back. The Neo Body guys backstage as they have uh, prepared themselves for a six-man tag coming up. And uh, they've got their tape on. They've got their boots on. They're ready to go. And uh, they're happy for a chance to win the tag titles. They uh, Jesse felt like that this was everything that they needed. And uh, Preston Vance was the guy for the job when it came to uh, uh, being his partner to go for the tag team titles. And he feels confident in this new unit. And they're going to have uh, a bit of a, a warm up here uh, in a six man tonight. Uh, coming up next as they face the Regal Twins along with Effie. And that leads us to our six-man match. Cesar Bononi and the Neo Body Guys against Effie and the Regal Twins. Uh, right at the nine-and-a-half-minute mark, it was a decent enough uh, match. But Jesse Goddard ends up uh, uh, pulling out some, uh, I think, well, let's say it's a can of, like, spray tan or something. Some sort of spray. I don't know. Hairspray, hairspray hasn't been used in a while, but 
some sort of spray, maybe like the cold spray, like like what um, uh, uh, um, what's his nuts from the elite uses. Either way, gets it into the eyes of uh, of one of the Regal twins. Low blows him and then rolls him up, and uh, that's enough to get the three. And the Neil Body guys take the win. Brandon Cutler, there we go. I knew it was Brandon something. I don't know why I can't remember Cutler. But uh, yeah, Neil Body guys pick up the win, although an underhanded win to say the very least. Very violent, still giving you shit for that HPW War Games match. The War Games match? You mean you mean when I did? Uh, when I when I did uh, Prisoners of War, because I'll tell you right now, that's already like, that's already like on a a, sp a side, um, that's already like on a side uh, sheet of matches to potentially use to bring back. If that's gonna that's gonna be a match, I'm almost certainly gonna bring back at some point. Prisoners of War. I I am I am perfectly okay with that. Hey Doc, hey you. <laughs> Why is was it played up all the fucking time? Why were you guys gonna play it? Well, you're a little too late. I even checked Discord to make sure that you guys weren't weren't gonna be asking me, and then I started this. I literally wasn't gonna do anything tonight. <laughs> it's never played up. All right, so then come come at me at like like at like nine p.m. and they'll be like, "Hey, play it up. You want to play play it up? Let's let's play play it up." Hey. I need something earlier. I need a put up, put up, put up showing up in my fucking Discord. Setting up a war games type match. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of proud of what I had. It was just, you know, it was basically a Survivor Series match inside Hell in a Cell, and then there was like holding cells like on the corners of the of the cell. <laughs> Why are you yelling at me? I'm not yelling at you specifically. I'm yelling at Doc because he's yelling at me. <laughs> Stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. There's no crying in TEW. Uh, the end. I uh, have a vignette. And uh, they'll be in action next week to get ready for their tag team title defense against Tankman and Lamar. I swear to God, I'm just getting, getting this done. Uh, they'll be in action next week to get ready for Tankman and Lamar for their title defense. And uh, so we'll be getting ready for it that Eddie Edwards comes out. He's going to talk about uh, facing uh, Anthony Mayweather for the uh, Vertigo World title at Damnation. Before he can really get even any words out, Ty Ray comes down, starts insulting uh, Eddie Edwards, says he's not going to win anyway because the only way, the only person who's truly going to win is the future of professional wrestling, the future of Vertigo, and that's Ty Ray. And after Eddie Edwards loses at Damnation, Ty Ray is looking forward to being the next challenger for the Vertigo World Championship. That leads to our main event. Ty Ray taking on Tim Donst. Superb wrestling in good heat. Great match between the both, both of these guys. A bit of lack of psychology. That's fine. Just under 13 and a half minutes. Donst hits the Donstitution and uh, gets a little bit of... Uh, gets, a, gets, gets a little bit of momentum back here by uh, beating Ty Ray. And uh, we finally finish off the show on a bit of a cliffhanger. Heath Miller busting into the uh, busting in, uh, into the uh, the building. He had arrived late, but he is uh, going through people in security. He is just yelling and screaming and looking for JT Dunn after the attack that JT Dunn had last week against Joe Hennig in his big return match in professional wrestling. JT Dunn loaded. Uh, Laid him out with the loaded elbow, and uh, Heath Miller finds him, and uh, the roster, the locker room has uh, separated the both of them as Heath Miller is looking for blood. JT Dunn begging him to come at him, and uh, that is how the show ends. 57, very nice. I'll take that. All right. Based, what, the attack or... <laughs> Oh, the, uh, the, what is that? Daniels, Motor City Machine Guns, Prince Devon versus Tajiri Edwards, Black, Roderick Strong. Interesting. Uh, episode two. All right. Oh, I got local workers to pick up. That's right. This was a, this was a, this was a, uh, this is a week I was going to pick up local workers for, uh, 
squashes. Chase Holiday. Give them a give them a shot. See how good they do. See what happens. Randy Summers. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, Jax Dane. And I know there was like one more guy. Mike Seidel. That's who it was. <laughs> See what they can pull off for a match. If it's worth it. I'm thinking Mike Seidel and maybe Chase Holiday will be the best guys. <laughs> no, you're picking the shit ones. Jax Dane, please God. Listen, they're here to lose. They're here to lose. I'm not picking them up as like future roster members and picking them up as guys to guys to lose to Odinson and Pero. Uh, speaking of Jack Stane and Randy Summers. There we go. Get good losers. Now you pipe down or else I'll get Jax Dane and I'll reunite him with Anthony Mayweather and we'll have we'll have a big Haas tag team just take over Vertigo. <laughs> we'll just we'll we'll uh we'll reform the uh the were they called prisoners of war at impact? But yeah, we'll reform their impact team. Uh Odinson. <laughs> wife beaters. <laughs> Listen, he didn't beat his wife. He violated a he violated a no contact order. <laughs> you can just make of that what you will. Oh yeah, that's not gonna be open. It's a squash. It's not gonna be open. No, we're not putting the titles on the line. That worked, right? Yeah, that's how it was. Are you sure you liked it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's way more dubious. Maybe. There we go. Two minutes. Uh, let's see here. That one's got uh, Calvin Tankman and Trey Lamar. Uh, and his finisher on Dane. So we got Odinson. Caro. And we're going to geek out Jax Dane. He's a big boy, too. So it makes sense that they would pick the bigger of the two guys and uh, lay him out. So entertainment, entertainment. Uh, menace and menace. And he's going to sell. And minor defeat and minor successes all the way down for these guys. Boom. Let's see. Angle. Drop it. One minute. Let's see here. We have got AR Fox and the Tate Twins. So AR Fox, Brandon Tate. Brent Tate. He's talking about Mike Bailey. And he's talking about Christian Casanova. So that'll give them a little little something. That'll give them a rub. That'll give these guys a rub for their promo. Whoops, come on. I think the Tate twins can probably do. I mean, I'm sure they've got at least charisma, right? Ooh. Well, they've got sex appeal. Of course they do. They're the boys. They should have sex appeal. They got charisma. I mean, that makes sense. That's all right. The Tate twins is not a... <laughs> it's not a good thing to be. I just call them the boys. It's fine. All right. I was trying to think. I was trying to think what other horrifying set of twins I could call them. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We've got the throwbacks in action. And they're taking on Chase Holiday, Chase Holiday, and Mike Seidel. Boom. And we've got 10 minutes total for that let's give griff garrison the win on that one uh not an open match because it's kind of supposed to be a bit of a squash maybe not so much but uh whatever that's fine 
Uh, let's see here. We got AC. Oh no. What have you what have what have you posted? Oh no. Is he praying to Donald Trump? Please save me, Donald Trump. Is is he praying to Donald Trump? No. No. I don't need Is there a man in his Did you just send me a video of a man in his SUV sending a prayer praying for Donald Trump? Like he's Jesus himself coming down. Um, okay, let's see here. Davidson vignette talking about Parker. So let's do Ryan Davidson. Let's talk Drew Parker. He's off screen. Gives him a bit of a rub. But uh, this is a Davidson vignette. And that's two minutes. Boom. Always break me. Post that in there. Let's see. This is Heath. Heath talking to Nick Dinsmore. It's about JT Dunn, but eh, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, pushes both of them. They're going to have a argument. All right. We got one on one match. We've got Zachary Wentz. Zachary Wentz and Wheeler Yuta. Boom. And we're going 12 minutes on that. And we've got Yuta getting the victory, but we're going open. We're going all out and it's going to be a cheap win because he's going to get DQ'd. It's going to be a DQ finish outside interference on Yuta from the Tate twins. There we go. This is going to be, this is going to have the Tate twins all over it. I think he starts crying at the 18 second mark. Oh my God. Does he really? I don't man. Like a, like a, like a, like a Christian in church praying in tongues and then starting to cry. Oh Lord almighty. Uh, let's see here. Neo body guys. Once again, Jesse Goddard's. Caesar and Preston. I like that. We still have some comic relief guys. That was one thing I've thought about with my booking so far is I, I, I maybe need more like little ridiculous comic guys. And I'm glad I still kind of have this and I've info wars, Taylor Wyndham. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, he's got, uh, he's got, he's got pretty okay, uh, charisma. And, yeah. I'll have to put something in there for him at some point. Uh, speaking of, let's see here. We've got that. We've got Christian Casanova. Um, and Mike Bailey is there with him as well. And... Microphones there, builds them up, does the thing. There we are. Match. Enforce Hill Anthony and Nick Fuentes parody. The new right. Do I have a Nick Fuentes parody? Do I need to go grab one of those guys? Uh, let's see. Christian Casanova. Here we go. We're going 17 minutes. This is our main event. We've got AR Fox getting the win. Open match. Decisive. Uh, at ringside is Mike Bailey. Here we go. I think that's about it. And last angle to end off the show. Three minutes. And that's uh, AR Fox, Mike Bailey. Once again, Tate Twins come in, sell, uh, fight, fight, and fight.
fucking comp is allowed to do it. Why can't we? Oh my god. All right. Am I at 60? I'm at 62. Where did I where did I go wrong here? Okay, this should be 1. Let's see. 821 1022. There it is. I was like I usually hit right at the 60 minute mark, so I didn't know where I was where I was at with that. All right. Moving along. All right, we're at Vertigo Attack episode number 30, the second in the tapings. And uh, we get the end of starting up the uh, the show here with a tune-up match to get themselves ready for uh, for Tankman and Lamar next uh, at the end of the month. They're facing uh, locally hired uh, Jax Dane and Randy Summers. And uh, only takes them about five and a half minutes, hit the last rights on Randy Summers. And uh, call it a day as they uh, get the get the easy win here. Uh, at the end of the at the end of it though, Tangman and Lamar show up on the screen, start insulting the end, and uh, you know how they think they're big and bad, and uh, reiterate that uh, Tangman and Lamar do not fear the end. A lot of other guys might be afraid of them and what they can do, but they are ready to take on that challenge at Damnation. They are ready to fight. And uh, to once again show their power. This time they grab Jax Dane and hit the last rights on Jax Dane, leaving him laying. And that goes, we take it to the back to AR Fox. Uh, and he's with the Tate twins talking about uh, Mike Bailey. He uh, hasn't heard anything in the last week from uh, Mike Bailey about uh, his challenge at Damnation and uh, looking to uh, find out about. Uh, find out uh, an answer for that and he also talks about christian casanova uh casanova also someone who wasn't here immediately he was here you know about a year about a year into it and uh is trying to have some sort of uh ground swell some sort of grassroots uh rise through the uh, rankings here at vertigo and uh, ar fox is looking to stomp that out in the main event tonight Jack's team was the worst guy in the match. So surprising. <laughs> yeah, I figured as much. All right. We got the throwbacks against another couple of local hires in Chase Holiday and Mike Seidel, brother of uh, Matt Seidel. And uh, goes about eight minutes. Griff Garrison uh, submits Mike Seidel and uh, got a little win for the throwbacks there. They don't win a whole lot, but uh, get themselves a nice little win there. And uh, that was about that was about it for that. Nothing too spectacular, it seems, other than the fact that it got the crowd hotter somehow. We didn't have enough money for the good one. Yeah, we can't we can't afford your brother. <laughs> it was like it was like in Hawkeye Pro when I when I couldn't get Dolph Ziggler, so I got Ryan Nemeth and then called him Dolph Ziegler. <laughs> Same idea. Literally just. Literally just have it be like, hey, can you do, can you do a shooting star press? You can do a shooting star press? Okay, cool. Uh, Ryan Davidson vignette. Quick little uh, couple minute vignette here. Uh, detailing his attack on Parker last week and busting him open with a chair and making him bleed. Once again, reiterates, uh, reiterates uh, in his own little way uh, about the insults that Drew Parker uh, sent to him. And, uh, you know, says, basically, you think you're the prince of the death match. Well, well, I guess we'll put that to the test in a street fight at Damnation. And I think I might. I don't remember if I put that in there, but I think we can pretty much make it official at this point. Uh, nope. Uh, that's a pre-booked match there. And I'm going to have to go find it. Uh, I don't think it's going to be too hard here. Uh, oh, we don't really have a street fight, do we? Eh, basically, just call it a hardcore. How about that? That's basically what we're doing anyway. Hardcore street fight, no DQ. Who cares? It's all the same thing. Uh, Ryan Davidson laying down the challenge for Drew Parker. There we go. Book it. Uh, we got Heath Miller barging into Nick Dinsmore's office, demanding once again, this time he can't find JT Dunn once he uh, barges in. 
And uh, Dinsmore says he sent Dunn home after uh, what happened, and he wanted to talk to uh, Heath Miller. And uh, you don't really get to hear too much about uh, what happens there, but he wants to try to get it, get this all figured out with Heath Miller. He understands that Miller's upset and uh, is looking to uh, make something happen here. We get to Zachary Wentz taking on Wheeler Yuda. Good wrestling, uh, decent reaction, good match between the both of them. Even though it didn't seem to click at all, they still did pretty okay, uh, all things considered. Nine and a half minutes. And uh, looked like uh, Yuta might have been able to get uh, pull off the victory here, but both Tate twins run in and uh, super kick him and uh, lay him out. The bell rings. Wheeler Yuta gets the win via disqualification after being attacked, but all things considered, not so great because uh, they uh, leave him laying there. Neo body guys, of course, see this on uh, on a monitor. And, uh, you know, they're basically talking to one another about this uh, upcoming, uh, you know, tag title number one contenders match that they're going to be involved in. And uh, they says, you know what, there seemed to be a pretty big fight going on now between uh, the Tate Twins and the Neon Ninjas. And uh, perhaps there's going to be, you know, something a little bit more between those two teams. But, hey, you know what, as long as those two teams are fighting each other. They're going to be perfectly fine. They're going to focus on themselves. They're going to go head to the gym, train a little bit more, get themselves in shape, and be ready for damnation. And hopefully uh, the Neon Ninjas and the Tay Twins tear each other apart. We get to Christian Casanova backstage. He's got uh, in the main event coming up next, uh, talking about uh, what AR Fox said about him and uh, what AR Fox plans to do to him. And he says he's not going to let Fox's anger get to him. He's going to have a uh, straight-out match tonight and uh, look to, to take the win here and uh, prove himself against probably one of his toughest challenges so far. And uh, Mike Bailey's in the back. He's going to be coming out to ringside to help him because he sees what's been happening with the Tate Twins and uh, wants to sort of even the score just to make sure nothing happens in this match. Main event coming up, AR Fox taking on Christian Casanova. Goes just under 15 and a half minutes. Superb wrestling in good heat. Uh, AR Fox benefited from having a hot new move. Uh, then hits low main pain on Christian Casanova. Gets the victory and uh, and, and gets, the, the, gets the pin here. But uh, as Mike Bailey sort of settles, as the Tate Twins did not show up, the Tate Twins do show up as... Uh, as uh, AR Fox is trying to invite Mike Bailey to get into the ring so that they can have a, a confrontation in the ring. Looks like he's looking for a fight. Bailey uh, still standing ringside. Didn't look like he wanted to get in, but the Tate Twins come from the crowd, beat him down outside of the ring, toss him in, and uh, AR Fox hits low main pain on him, leaves him laying to end the show, stands over him, and uh, that is how the show ends. 54. All right, what is this? What is this Twitter thing that you put over here? Lex Luger receives a full introduction as the new WF World Champion in an unaired TV segment filmed weeks before WrestleMania 10. Oh yeah, because he didn't really he he wasn't he was never World Wrestling Federation. He was never WWF Champion, was he? If I remember right, I'm not sure. He never did win the WWF title, did he? It looked like he was going to do it, but, yeah. Every time Tyler puts a world title on a guy in his saves, it feels like this. Like it just never happened. Or a big introduction. We literally have Hiromu and Naito and Kenny Omega. No, Alex Reynolds. The big O. The big O was gone for two years at that point, <laughs> towards the end. Alex Reynolds hadn't been champion at that point. We had it on Akira Tozawa, and he was facing Katsuyori Shibata. If you want to get into the weeds, Hiromu was going to be the next champion. That's why I kind of did the. Uh, that's kind of why I did the big squash with uh, Nakamura at Anniversary Five was to set him up for uh, for a, for a title match eventually and take the title. It was probably going to be a few months down the road, but that was my idea. Naito was going to be the next challenger after Shibata. That was going to be a big one too. 
you were never going to put the belt on Shibata. I probably would have at, at some point, but probably not then. You know what? I'm not I'm I'm not even gonna deal with this. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna book. I'm just gonna book my shit. Give me one sec. I need to get more water before I do this. Now that you've dried my mouth out, I'm gonna argue with you. Ugh. I got this weird muscle cramping in my arm now. I don't know what happened. <sighs> All right. Ooh. All right. Scoot up, do this, set this down. All right. All right, what am I booking? Get the fuck out of here. Angle. Let's get this dealt with. Uh, let's see. Anthony Mayweather. Talking about Eddie Edwards. He's off screen. But builds up their title match. There we go. Speaking of Eddie, he's got a match against Darius Lockhart. Boom, boom. That's 10 minutes. Sid did twice. Vader never won. I know Vader never won it because Shawn Michaels is a prick. Eddie... Uh, probably not an open match. Decisive finish, though. And we'll have, um, we'll have Jerome Daniels and Timmy Lou Rett and ringside. So they have their, they get, they get their payday for being here. Okay, let's see here. Drop that in two minutes. Uh, let's see here. Eddie, Anthony Mayweather. He's off screen because now he's going to have his bit to say, and that's going to build their matchup still. I did that right, right? Okay, cool. That's what I wanted. Do -do. Got an angle. Two minutes. Matt Cardona. Going to be talking about uh, Starks. Ricky Starks. Probably doesn't need any more momentum, I think, at this point. I think he, I think Starks is already white hot, honestly. Yeah, he's as, he's as hot as you can get at this point. Uh I don't know why that said three. That needs to be two. I got two. Oh no! Don't don't do that. Well, 
Why is it? There we go. Uh, two, two, 16. 16 minutes total for this. Where this time we've got uh, Matt Cardona with Taylor Wyndham. Boom. These two haven't faced off yet, have they? No. Nope. No, you guys have been signed away with the big promotions yet. Yeah, I haven't. I don't think I've had anyone specifically leave. The only time I've had people sign uh, and they've been non-exclusive is in my Joshi promotions. There have been people, to be fair, there have been people that I've looked into signing that ended up signing to like AEW or WWE before I got a chance to sign them. Like, Chad Gable is one of the big ones. Chad Gable got dropped from WWE, and I was like, holy shit, all right, we can start rolling with Chad Gable a little bit. And just as I was about to sign him a little while back, uh, AEW picked him up. So that just kind of ruined everything. Matt Cardona, open match. Uh, yeah, let's do decisive win. <laughs> There we go. Be quicker. It wouldn't have mattered because then I would have had something together and then it would have been even worse because I would have had a story together for him and then would have had to just get in it away. Uh, Matt Cardona. Talking about a confrontation next week. Boom. There we go. I got four more segments. Let's, let's get that taken care of. There's another one. That's one minute. This is Calvin Tankman and Trey Lamar. And they're talking. There we go. Match. Main event. Six man main event. We got Mike Bailey on one side. AR Fox on the other. With Mike Bailey, we got the Neon Ninjas. And, of course, with AR Fox, who other than the Tate Twins? That's going 18. There we go. We have got... Let's see. Let's give it to... Let's give it to Facade. Taking one of the Tates. There you go. Punk is coming back. Thoughts? I mean, I figured it would probably happen. It seemed like right off the bat it he would be gone, gone. And then as things stopped, uh, as people stopped talking about it, it was one of those things that, I mean, it, well, it still remains to be seen. I don't know. I'm just wondering if it does happen, uh, how long is it going to be before the next big blow up? Because I feel like it's, that's pretty much coming. Whatever it is, there's going to be another big blow up. Uh, angle. Drop it in. Two minutes. We've got Heath. We've got JT Dunn. And these two guys going to confront. He's going to get a confrontation. Speaking of confrontation. Final bit is a six minute long in ring segment. That's with Ryan Davidson and Drew Parker. And I'd say fighting and selling, even though a lot of it is talking. That's kind of the big, that's kind of the big one. I wonder if that's going to, I wonder, oh, come on now. I wonder if that's going to be a pain. I wonder if I should have one, have him do talking first. There we go. Hey, Emma. When's the pay-per-view? It is uh, at the end of the month. So we've got our four sets of TV tapings. And then right after those TV tapings are done. Uh, on on week four, once we've gotten all of them out uh, and broadcasted, we have the uh, the pay per view, which will be on another stream because I've got a lot of stuff. Even after the the, <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of month and other episodes 
even after uh, even after this. Did I miss any TV tapings? Just taping one. This is episode three of the TV taping. So this is the this is the third. This is the second to last uh, one right before the go home show. When is Maven coming to Vertigo? He's in the new RWC Plus. I I don't know. We'll see. Does he is he actually wrestling wrestling? I didn't think he was. All right, sixty minutes. We're good there. Everything's good, solid. Okay, episode number thirty-one of Vertigo Attack, taped here. The third official episode of the taping starts off with Vertigo World Champion Anthony Mayweather seems to have a slightly different attitude ever since he uh, kind of changed up his look and uh, talks about his upcoming title match with uh, Eddie Edwards. And, uh, you know, his plans to win. He's not planning on losing anytime soon. Uh, in fact, uh, he's doing some training right now and uh, is not going to dignify coming in until damnation. So we will not be seeing him other than here. And then maybe, uh, you know, we will not be seeing him in the building until damnation when it is time for his uh, championship match. Speaking of, the guy he faces, Eddie Edwards, going to open up the show against Darius Lockhart. Great wrestling, good heat, just under eight and a half minutes. Eddie Edwards hits Lockhart with a Boston knee party with the rest of uh, Lockhart, Inc. Watching on, gets the win, and a uh, good, nice little uh, win there for Eddie Edwards. Grabs a mic afterwards and uh, says that he feels like uh, Anthony Mayweather doesn't take him seriously. He doesn't seem to be taking anything seriously, and in the recent months, that's that's been kind of the name of the game with Anthony Mayweather, and uh, reminds people, as well as Anthony Mayweather himself, that he is a former world champion. In fact, that Boston knee party that he hit on Darius Lockhart was the thing that won him the uh, Impact World Championship, so... He's not just facing some schlub. He's not just facing some random indie guy who's working his way up in the business. He's facing a former world champion at Damnation. He wants to make sure that everyone, including the champion, Anthony Mayweather, knows it. And uh, drops the mic, heads to the back, and there you go. Did Selva Cardona's fed a couple months ago. Is mostly an end to pop some man. Interesting. That sounds about right. Uh, speaking of Cardona, video plays of Matt Cardona on his uh, podcast with Brian Myers. Insulting Ricky Starks. He did a little aside uh, about uh, this this little match that he did in Iowa uh, with, with absolute Ricky Starks and uh, complains about the cheating that Starks did in order to beat him. And uh, we go back backstage after that little segment plays, and uh, he's in gear. He's ready to go for a match tonight, and he stands by everything he said. And, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's ready to go for his match. And, uh, you know, there we go. Matt Cardona taking on Taylor Wyndham. Fantastic. He decent re uh, wrestling went just under 14 minutes. Hits the, uh, well, I guess I should change that to radio silence because that's what it is called now. Uh, Cardona hits Taylor Wyndham with radio silence and uh, and gets the pin there. And uh, Cardona, why is Cardona only a 35? I don't, oh, well, it said he was off his game. I think that's probably why. He was really off his game. That's probably a big part of it. Let me see here. What's the dirt sheet got? Penalized for being rusty, penalized for inconsistency. So there you go. Rust, rust and inconsistency. How is he rusty? And he's probably not getting he's probably not getting booked by other people in this game, despite the fact that he's getting booked by everybody in real life. <laughs> also reminds me whether he doesn't have a no contact clause against his wife. Oh my god. Uh so yeah, Cardona getting the win against Taylor Wyndham. Uh, grabs a microphone afterwards. Uh, once again, has the camera point right at him. As he says, I know that Ricky Starks is going to watch this, send this to him, make sure he knows that he wants him here next week uh, for an in-ring confrontation. They're going to settle this between each other next week uh, live in the middle of the ring. So Starks hasn't been around uh, much this month, and uh, Cardona is pissed, and he's ready to 
to uh, to uh, end this between them. Tankman and Lamar, quick little vignette with them, just about a minute. Uh, they'll be in the ring next week, and uh, they want a showdown with the end. They're planning on having. Uh, they're planning on ha- being there, being in the ring, having a match, and uh, they invite the end to show up when they when they uh, get done with their match. And our main event, Mike Bailey teaming up with the Neon Ninjas, taking on AR Fox and the Tate Twins. One team that's not too fond of the Tate Twins. Of course, Mike Bailey and AR Fox have had their problems as well. Superb Wrestling, decent reaction. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, Facade ends up hitting Hyper Crush on Brent Tate and gets the win. Just over 15 minutes in the main event. And Bailey and the Neon Ninjas get the win. Did I I did book that. Did I book that match? Let's yeah, we we I didn't book that match. Let's book that match. That's what we've got going on as well. So we can we can make this official. Obviously. Uh I'm trying to think. No, I didn't I didn't book anything for that. So we're basically making that all all pretty much official at this point. Mike Bailey and AR Fox at Damnation. One on one. <laughs> I think we've got just what one more match maybe at this point uh, i'm sure it's probably not anything i need to worry about too much uh let's see here so there you go big win for them mike bailey coming out and just a night mike bailey and ar fox just carrying this to an to a great rating heath miller has found jt dunn once again and uh jt dunn actually uh tells him that he went and talked to nick dinsmore and says that, uh, and, and says that uh, he went to uh, Dinsmore and said that they are not to touch each other. They have a contract here stating uh, Heath Miller, if he wants to fight JT Dunn at Damnation, they can do it. And uh, they'll have their fight. But until then, do not touch him. And so we've got a no contact between uh, Heath Miller and JT Dunn. But... Looks like it's pretty much official now for Damnation. Let's see here. Heath Miller and JT Dunn. Boom. No contact clause. Yeah, I know. Probably not the best idea right now. (laughs) I got it. I got it. One of my least favorite tropes. Oh, the two guys. Oh, the two guys can't touch each other. Yeah, I know. I haven't really done the no. This is. I don't remember the last time I've ever actually booked a no contact clause between guys. You know. Uh, we've got Ryan Davidson and Drew Parker who do not have a no contact clause between them. There's weapons strewn all over the ring to uh, set the stage for what they plan on using at each other at Damnation. They uh, they go, they go trade insults at one another. They see things seem to get very intense as uh, you know they seem to have this uh, idea of who can actually one up the other person and who's a bit more hardcore than the other person. And they basically just decide that they're going to find out just who is more uh, hardcore and who is the better deathmatch worker sort of we're not really doing a deathmatch but uh, i guess we'll find out between ryan davidson and drew parker at damnation as it looks like they're gonna go without harming one another davidson uh hits parker once again grabs a table that was setting on the side plows him through the table and uh leaves him laying as davidson walks away and that is the end of the show 59 still great great stuff happening here we'd add so many more feds if it ended up running like total ass yeah no kidding dude that's the one thing too that keeps me from putting on like a hundred different things where it's like there's so many indies i could throw on here that'd be kind of cool because you probably get a lot more people like booked on shows but yeah then you have the idea that it would just it would slow everything down <laughs> and that's the last thing we need is this game slowing down anymore uh let's see here i didn't have any pre-booking shit right now okay good because i think i did that i think i had that problem last time so 
Uh, all right. Last little bit. Let's see here. We got Starks. Open it up hot. Quick little one minute bit. Ricky Starks is here. Ricky Starks has arrived. All right. Angle here. Could have a Nassau computer. Yeah, you know what? I, at this point, I don't even think it's a problem with the computer as much as it is Visual Basic 6. The fact that this thing is coded in VB6 is probably the reason why it acts so slow. My own personal feeling, of course. How are we? We're doing pretty good. Uh, things are things are getting a little bit later than I, I kind of thought that would be, but, you know, that's fine. I kind of assumed this would happen. I don't, it's not like I have to work a full day tomorrow. I've got, I've got the, uh, heating and air conditioning guys coming tomorrow for my air conditioning tune up, you know, right at the time where, uh, I no longer need to worry about that. And it's going to dip back it down into like the fifties and sixties after tomorrow. But nonetheless, get that taken care of for the year. Cause Hey, I already prepaid for it. So just one of the things I got to deal with, with home ownership. Yeah, that was like 550 bucks last year when they came out Ugh, and having to deal with that. And now I have to deal with the fact that um, I'm going to need a new system here soon because it is old. Still weren't running, so that's fine. Do we have an update? Not as far as I know. I know they were working on, uh, what, the comic book game or whatever. I'm sure at some point, I don't know. They might do 2024, might do 2025. Can you imagine a game? Can you imagine a game in 2025 being booked in Visual Basic 6? It's going to be, I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to be because I'm sure other stuff hasn't been learned by now. <laughs> it's We're pretty much stuck like this now. I don't know how much you can pretty up uh, Visual Basic 6, but I guess we'll find out. Unless he completely uh, gets underneath the hood. Glory Pro Chaotic Vibe, yeah. Yeah, there's a few in here. Be like, mm, that'd be nice to have that, yeah. Just add real clock and tweener back. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, they don't. Yeah, that's one of the big things is I'm not you. I'm still it's still so weird sort of to have the the 28 day match or month you know literally every other game can actually do a calendar properly but this is set up specifically to do a uh to do something different it'd be nice to just have a date there like august 5th 2022 something like that that'd be nice I'm hoping, you know what? I already bought Pro Wrestling Sim a long time ago. I did dig into it for a little bit just to see how much has done that. They got, it's obviously still got a little ways to go. They still got a ways to go, but you know what? Not too bad. I'm excited to see what happens. Excited to see what comes of it. Hopefully it can add a lot of the bells and whistles that TEW has. Until then, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, and just got it. Is it all of them? Yeah, it's basically all of them. So, yeah, Preston. Entertainment, entertainment. You know what? I'm going to start building up Preston Vance's entertainment skill. We'll just script all of it. I wonder if that works. That should work. Oh, that's right. This was a this was a promo heavy show. I forgot about that. That was a this was a big promo heavy show. Uh Drew Parker. Uh Ryan Davidson. This is two minutes. He's off screen. He's talking. We'll do microphone. Because it's a vignette or a promo something. Uh, never did vibe. I'm fucking completely by the commission. I don't think I've ever. I don't think I've really heard of vibe before. I might have. I don't remember. That's something that I'm. I'm not 100 percent certain on. Uh, let's see here. 
We got another six man. Man, I booked a lot of six man tags this month. Holy shit. Probably because I wanted to actually utilize some of these guys. So. All right. Uh, the Rascals and Jet Knight. And then we've got JT Dunn, Kyler Kahn, and Caleb Conley. Whoops. Not sure why that didn't put them in there. Well, we'll just do that. Billy Dixon's fan. Huh. I guess I didn't I guess I didn't pay that much attention to it. Um hmm, you know what? Yeah, this should be. Yeah, we're gonna get JT done to do that. We'll make it an open match. Um, it is a tainted win because outside interference on JT Dunn or no, not outside interference, distraction finish. Sorry. I have the whole, I have the whole thing. There we go. And I think that's. Good to go. Uh, let's see. I feel like there have been some signings since you were here last. Who's Chase Holiday? He was a local worker. Oh, he's probably not even in the local workers. He was just a local worker I used uh, who happened to be here. Uh, along with guys like Jack Stain and Mike Seidel and just guys who were there that I just threw into matches to get squashed. Yeah, there's a few guys I basically just threw in there to get squashed. They were just one night signings. Uh, JT Dunn, of course, with Heath. And that's about it. There we go. Two minutes. There we go. What was your most overbooked match in playing TEW? I don't remember. I, I'm sure it was, you know what it probably was, is I know there was a, I don't remember which match it was, I know there was a match uh, where I had to do a lot of, like, I had to do some some TNA in 2007 seven level bullshit for all these fucked finishes just to get one person to go over another person. That's one thing from 2010 game that I love is being able to talk to them into booking and convincing someone to put another person over because when I had to go into the, the actual thing and book the book, the just Vince Russo level schmazes just to put somebody over, just to get somebody to lose. I'm glad I can just convince people now to just put somebody over for the sake of it. I enjoy that, but I'm sure it was, I'm sure there was a couple of matches like that, that I had to just be like, and it was a, and a, a, a keep them strong. And there was interference. And then they gotta, then they gotta use a weapon and it's a tainted finish, but they, I, God damn it. I got the pin. Uh, Garden state would have been, they've been radio silent. Aren't they, don't they have a show coming up too with like a bunch of Joshi's? Don't they have like a like a King of the Indies or Queen of the Indies thing coming up with like some Tokyo Joshi Pro and uh, Marvelous Girls? I'm like positive that's uh, that it's Garden State that's doing it, unless I'm going crazy. Um, all right. While I wait for that, Facade Wheeler Yuda, uh, Brandon Tate, Brent Tate. Oh, screw you know what? I might not even utilize them. That's West Coast Pro. Okay. I thought Garden State was... I swear Garden State had Miyu Yamashita who's going to show up. Or was it Unagi Sayaka? There's an Unagi Sayaka match on the West... Is it West Coast Pro or is it Garden State? Shit. I remember seeing it. Well, I'm sure someone will know. It's it's yeah, it was something like that. I remember she's she's wrestling in America here very soon. And I want to say she's facing 
Is it Mio Momono that she's facing? Or somebody else? She's wrestling here in America. I just don't remember for who. Uh, okay. Let's see here. That's probably West Coast Pro then that I'm I'm and I'm just going crazy about it. I swear there was a Garden State thing. But maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe they were maybe they had me the last time she was here and I'm just confusing them. That's also very possible. I feel like because I've definitely heard Garden State's name before. Absolutely zero updates. OK, so I'm probably just crazy and I'm thinking of West Coast Pro who's doing the whole queen of the Indies, bringing in people from uh, Marvelous. Uh, all right, so let's see here. Uh, entertainment, entertainment, and minor success is here. Boom. All right. Main event. 1v1. Trey Lamar and Andrew Everett. They're going 15 total. But I'm hilarious to say Garden State money marked themselves out of the business. I was going to say they had some big matches, if I remember that. If I remember right. Like, is that what happened? Because I'm pretty sure Garden State was one that had a uh, like a couple Joshis show up sometime last year. And that I, I would have been hilarious and sad if they actually money mark themselves out of out of this. Because I remember they had some big, they had some big shows, if I remember right. I can go to their cage match. Garden State Pro Wrestling. Myron Reed, Davey Richards, Billy Star, oh, Billy Starks, KZ, Big Boss Shimizu. And drag, yeah, I'm just looking at that like, oh, KZ, Big Boss, Shimizu. Good Lord. They had a show a month prior, though, that didn't seem to have a whole lot of, uh, didn't seem to have a whole lot of people, though. Or at least didn't seem to have a whole lot of huge names, at least. Oh, well, they did spend money bringing best bros over. So that's probably a big, you know. Even, even, uh, you know, despite even how much money they might have made on that, uh, even, I don't even know how much the booking is for both of them, but, you know, flights from Japan are not cheap, even in, even in, uh, um, uh, economy. They're still going to run you at least 800 a seat minimum. Especially if you fly them in closer to a weekend or a holiday, that's like eleven hundred easy. Where were they doing their stuff? Was that Oregon, Jersey? Oh God, they flew them all the way to Jersey. So you had to, so they had to fly them in to at least like either L.A. or Chicago, and then fly them to Jersey. Jesus Christ! Just for two people there, just for one match. Good God. Uh, to be open West Coast Pro and Prestige both will also feel like money mark promotions but are also actually successful yeah I mean I guess it all kind of to be fair for a while there I thought Revolver was going to be a money mark promotion that was going to fail because it, it was kind of filling out the uh, Valor Ballroom at the time and I mean they're doing better now but yeah, it was it was one of those things. I was sitting there going, mm, "How much are these people?" I mean, to be fair, they only bring in a few a few people, you know, like bigger stars. And then, of course, the fact that it's kind of being headed up by Sammy Callahan probably helps, so he can get a pretty big discount on uh, the impact the impact peeps. And we should be at 57. Yes, we are. Perfect. All right. There you go. Alvin Tankman, Ray Lamar, Odinson, Paro, uh, Menace. Whoops. Menace, 
charisma, menace, menace. Puts them all over to end the show. Boom. All right. One of them booked Yamato. Lord. See again. <laughs> Just scare them into working revolver now. No, they just start running away and say, all right, I'll work for it if you can catch me. Just watch Sammy Callahan try to run. Uh, all right, 60 minutes. We're good. We're at the bare minimum amount of match time we're supposed to we're supposed to have for people not to get pissed off. All right. Okay, Vertigo Attack, episode number 32. Less people than we usually get. Fuck me running. Uh, but this is the final of the uh, four uh, TV, t uh, the final uh, episode of the TV tapings uh, that we have going and uh, to air four weeks from now, or I guess three weeks officially now. Uh, we're going to start off Ricky Starks arriving for the go home show. He's got the heritage title in tow. Got it over his shoulder. He is ready to put Matt Cardona in his place tonight. And that's what we're going to have. We're going to have a big face-off between Matt Cardona and Ricky Starks. And we go to Nick Dinsmore. We haven't seen much of Nick Dinsmore come out to the uh, to the arena for a little bit. We've just seen him occasionally in his office. But comes in, greets the crowd, and uh, does a little pep talk of how excited uh, he is for Damnation. For their next big event, uh, especially their big broadcasted event. And uh, he's especially excited because at Damnation, he will have a major announcement for Vertigo. And uh, teases that, uh, well, you know, he's got, he's got something big. He's got something big planned for Vertigo, and he's going to talk about it at Damnation. <laughs> Dins were getting on uh, by a chair. And what, become Eugene? Is that what you're about to say? Uh, we've got Eric Cannon taking on Mike Seidel. Decent reaction to subpar wrestling. I'm not too shocked about that. Cannon gets the win in just under eight and a half minutes with the swinging neck breaker. Uh, good to see Eric Cannon here. Uh, as he's basically just uh, kind of filling time here. <laughs> Decent enough little match, I guess. 29 is not great. Neither one of these guys are top tier, but Cannon's a good character. Uh, speaking of characters, Anthony Mayweather once again. Uh, has another vignette for the for uh, for the crowd. Talks about how he's once again not going to be there, not even for the go home show. He's only going to show up at Damnation because that's what a true champion does. He's a prize fighter, and being here for attack is not a prize. Uh, he he did hear what Eddie Edwards had to say about being a former world champion. And he knows that Eddie Edwards tough. He's dealt with a whole lot, broken arm, wrestling a ladder match with a broken arm, all his hardcore matches. He understands Eddie Edwards is a tough guy, but he's not good enough and he's not tough enough to beat Anthony Mayweather. And uh, he'll find that out at Damnation uh, when he defends the Vertigo World Championship against him. And Neo Body guys got a quick little vignette once again. They're uh, preparing for their tag at title number one contenders match at Damnation. Uh, they're hitting the gym, going and getting their tans. They're going on to the clubs and uh, loading themselves full of drinks as uh, dancing with ladies and working out. Just uh, basic, basic bro stuff as they prepare themselves in their own unique way for their uh their their uh, big match at damnation for the number one contendership to the tag titles drew parker gives a quick little update on uh the attack from uh from ryan davidson last week being put through a table says he's hurt he's been dealing with the hurt against ryan davidson so far um you know between the chair and the table uh, he says that David the Davidson has uh, put some marks on him, put some bruises and cuts on him. But if he wants to beat him at damnation, he's going to have to do a whole hell of a lot more to keep Drew Parker down. And uh, and Drew promises pain like you wouldn't imagine at damnation against Ryan Davidson. Very poor one trying to improvise dialogue. He then said suffer and succotash and the camera cuts. 
Jet Knights tag teaming with uh, the Rascals in the six-man tag against JT Dunn and his partners, Kyler Khan and Caleb Conley. Uh, good wrestling, decent reaction here. Uh, I want to see if there's any standouts. Wentz and Xavier, of course. JT Dunn did okay. Caleb Conley did okay, too. But just went, uh, went over just over 10 and a half minutes. And uh, Heath Miller comes out for a distraction. JT Dunn faces off with him, uh, screaming at him from the ring. And uh, before anything else, uh, Jet Knight comes up behind him and uh, rolls uh, JT Dunn up, uh, distracted JT Dunn for the pin. And Jet Knight and the Rascals get the victory. A very unlikely pin there for, uh, for Jet Knight as he rolls up JT Dunn. And, of course, Dunn is beside himself, pissed off and demands uh tells uh heath to get back into the ring uh to get to get back in here and face off with him uh he says he's gonna wait until damnation he's 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 not gonna break any of the rules right now he's he's getting there and uh damnation's not that far away and he said that the ass whooping that he's gonna give jt done at damnation will be for joe and be what he uh, and and be for what jt done did to joe hennig uh, several weeks ago and uh, that is how we and that to go back to the neon ninjas they're not happy with the tate twins and and uh what they had to deal with last the last couple of weeks and they'll be getting their revenge on the tate twins of course uh basically by winning they said you know what we're not gonna we're not gonna throw hands we're not gonna do all sorts of underhanded cheap tricks that's what the tate twins do and uh, Neon Ninjas are going to do what they do best, and that is win. And they're going to do that at Damnation. The ultimate revenge by becoming the number one contenders, probably by even beating the Tate Twins uh, at Damnation. We get the big showdown. Matt Cardona and Ricky Starks facing off in the ring. Just five minutes of trading insults between each other. And uh, getting in each other's faces nearly ends in a brawl as they get nose to nose with each other and really start yelling at each other and uh, gets gets separated uh, with the referees there. And Cardona promises that he is going to win and he is going to walk out the new heritage champion and take that belt away from Ricky Starks uh, at Damnation. And we get our main event, Trey Lamar taking on Andrew Everett. Decent enough match, just under 13 minutes. Trey Lamar submits Andrew Everett. It was a high flying match. Both guys really went to the, really put the pedal to the metal in that one. And uh, Trey Lamar gets the victory there with uh, Calvin Tankman out there with him. And speaking of, uh, just as they had invited them last week, Calvin Tankman gets into the ring. The end's music hits. And they come out with the uh, Vertigo tag titles. They get into the ring, get a stare down. And uh, Tankman and Lamar have a microphone, say they can't wait to get their hands on the end at Damnation and take those titles from them. They say they didn't have the opportunity to do it. An anniversary blitz because of the third team. And now that it's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, Tankman and Lamar walking away with the Vertigo tag team titles. And that is how we end the show and the tapings. Man, Mikey Nichols looking worse for wear in that picture. Where did they get that picture? Mm. Ah, needed some water. Signings. Signings done. Uh, nothing really going on at all. Nothing going on. Nope. Rinku Singh. Is he around? Is he still signed? Yeah, he's signed in NXT. Get Veer. All right. Eh, time to spend money. <laughs> he looks fine. Don't be rude. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we're good there. We got our show tonight. This is good. All right. 
Uh, Kawasaki? No. Uh, well, first off, we're not broadcasting it at all, so do that. Back to Shinjuku face, because we can almost to the point of filling it out. Do we have any backstage incidents? We don't. Perfect. All right. And I think we're to booking at this point. I know I saw pre-booking, so we'll just add that now before I fuck that up. Well, no, we'll, we'll add it when I get to it. How about that? We'll just work our way down from what I've already got booked. Uh, let's see here. Exclude. We got Chie. We've got Mocha. There we go. We got 10 minutes total on that one. And Chie getting the win. We'll leave it open. Why not? Decisive win, though. Boom. AC angle. The good news is, is there isn't a ton of... Now that I can spread everything out amongst two hours, it's not going to be all that bad. Everything's kind of condensed within one show, so it's not going to be as bad as doing four shows. So I can knock this out quicker. Miyagi can do another loser lease. She's not going to be able to be booked anywhere anymore. Son of a bitch. Uh, Miyako Matsumoto. She's off screen, but we're going to do that. Entertainment brings them both up. There you go. There we go. Uh, another angle. This with uh, the new team. Whoops. Now Ishikawa and Yuki Arai, who have a team name now. So there we go. We'll do entertainment. We'll assume, much like any other Joshi show, that this is all happening out in the ring. All right. Tag team action. AI princess. Mari Koto. There we go. 13 minutes. And we'll give Kohaku the win. We'll give uh, now the loss. Yeah. Open match, though. We're, I want to make it seem like uh, they have a fighting chance because something tells me they're probably not nearly as big as the other two. So. Speaking of, do we have lo we don't have a lot of local workers? We got Stuart Fulton again. The commentary partner of the one guy who's uh, who was rude to uh, to Sean Waltman. <laughs> Let's see, May, Asahi, and now Kakuta. They're gonna come out, do their shtick. You know what's probably gonna happen. You know what I'm probably going to do is while I still do have enough entertainment based stuff in here, I feel like I'm going to have, I feel like I'm still going to book this more like a, like a, like a Joshi show, like a, like a TJPW or a Gunbare, where they kind of come out and do like, I don't know. I like the idea of having little bits in between because, you know, most Tokyo Joshi pros don't shows don't have that. They only have like the one thing at the beginning. And then maybe a song, and then like one thing at the end. <laughs> hey, your dog died. So sorry, mate. Absolutely upsetting. Thoughts on Jinsei Shinzaki's time in the WWF? <laughs> All right. Asahi, Mesaruga, and now Kakuta. And we've got Ram. Momoka and Yuna Mizumori. All right, let's see here. This is 12 minutes. Am I really doing a nine minute six person tag? This is some 
This is some borderline WWE in 2010. Well, no, because they would give them literally three minutes. And do touring schedules. But why do touring schedule? Like, honestly, people don't really do touring schedules all that much. Like, Tokyo Joshi Pro kind of does them. Uh, Stardom does them because they have the money for it. But, like, I'm on that level of, like, Ice Ribbon, where if I had my own dojo, I'd probably run all my shows out of there. <laughs> and then draw 400 people in Karakuen Hall. That's that's where I'm at. They don't have tours. They just do shows. That's where I'm at. I'm at the level of, like, Diana or Wave, where I'm really just doing shows as I can, as I can afford them, which is maybe two or three times a month. That's where I'm at. And it keeps getting more expensive because they keep asking for more money. Uh, who should take the win? Let's give Asahi the win. She needs I think she needs to be built up a little bit. Who will take this loss? Uh Momika could take it. Let's do Yuna. I think Yuna's already kind of chilled, but eh, it's all right. Open, decisive win. There you go. There we go. Just say no. I can't. I want to keep a. I want to keep things kosher in my locker room. I want to piss people off by being with like Himika being like, "Hey, you're paying me 160. I'm worth 550. You should really start paying me better." And then I go, no. And then it's like, all right, well, I've just pissed her off permanently. All right. All right. Let's see here. Entertainment, entertainment. Talk about their thing. All right. Big match. Jungle Kiona and Saya Kamitani. 17 minutes. Kiona the veteran taking on an up and comer in uh, Kamitani. Open match and a decisive win. Uh, doesn't get the better of her, but still, good match. And I wouldn't have a career. I wouldn't say Plumby, but then I wouldn't have a career. <laughs> uh, let's see. Three minutes. Let's see. Hikari's going to come out and confront Jungle again. And they're going to do their thing. There we go. All right. Man, this is five minutes. Holy shit. What was I thinking? All right. Well, this has got the sleep train angels. Raku. Unagi. You know, even now, outside of stardom, she's known as Unagi Sayaka. I should probably call her Unagi Sayaka. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that while I have a... Would it be Sayaka Unagi? That's what I'm thinking it is. Because I think that's how she was referred to in Glee, where they do the more westernized version of it. Uh... There you go. No. All right. We'll just get that out of the way. We'll just pretend like that. There we go. Five minutes. Raku. Sai. Uh, Sai Nagi. And we've got our new debuts in Session Moth Martina and Natsu Sumire. There we go. And it's going to lead to our first match where we've got sleep training. Oh, no, I haven't. I haven't put them in there yet, have I? I bet I haven't done that. Nope. Add new team. Yep. We're going to do that right now. Natsu and Martina. Martina. 
Not individuals. Unit. Add team. There you go. All right, let's try this again. Let's see. Sleep train angels. Queens of Kanpai. There we go. This goes 13 minutes. We're going to give Unagi the win. It's going to be an open match, but it's going to be, we'll do decisive, but a flash pinfall. So less impressive, but still they get the win. Oh, unhappy about it. Oh, hey, uh, I could talk to her real quick, right? Hey, how would you I'd like to, I'd like for you to consider putting somebody over. And by that, I mean, I'd like you to consider putting over. You don't get along well enough with Saika. Okay. Uh, can you put Raku over then? I'm not willing to do this while she has such low momentum. All right. Let's, uh, let's get Natsu then. I'd like to get you to consider putting over. She's wanting to do that. I'm wondering if I can change that so that uh, Samira gets rolled up and then we keep Martina strong. All right. They're willing to take that fucking Kaijin. Session Moth refusing the job. I know. It's fucking Session Moth. What the fuck? What do you think you're not going to get booked in stardom if you lose this match? You're already not getting booked in stardom anymore. Uh, Mio Momono. Momo Watanabe. And entertainment's there to get themselves set up for that match. It's 12, right? Yep. All right. Now we go to pre-booking. Add that to the booking sheet. Oofta. All right. Draw. Open match. And we're doing... Where you at, buddy? Oh, my God. It's here. It's here. Time limit finish. 30 minute time limit draw between Michiko Miyagi and Himika. We'll see what happens. I think it'll work. I bet it'll work. It should be fine. Uh, end it at two minutes with Himika and Michiko still looking to fight each other. Minor successes. Boom. 30 minute Miyagi match. Don't know how that would work. I guess we'll find out. We'll see if we'll see what can happen here. I don't know. What's her what's her uh what's her stamina? Her stamina's at an eighty. She should be able to be fine. I don't know. Psychology's better than a lot of the other ones, so could work. I think it'll work out hard to book post-match stuff after a draw yeah i mean at this point all it basically is is like all right the bell rung these p these two people aren't finished so they just keep going and now but of course now the bell's constantly ringing because hey the match is over we got our time limit draw you're done and then you just get all the youngins in there to pull people apart that's basically how it happened all right. Booking analysis is good. Everything's good. That's all I wanted to do for this particular uh, event. 121 minutes, and we are done, Ski. Not penalized, and we're good. All right. We are at Idol Pro Live Stage 32. It's the first official show back from the fallout of Summer Gate 2022. Big event for Idol Pro there. 
And we're starting off with Chie Koishikawa, the new uh, hardcore Chie Koishikawa. A bit of a new look for her as she takes on Mocha Miyamoto. Decent uh, reaction, subpar wrestling, as one would expect from Chie Koishikawa and Mocha Miyamoto. Uh, just over seven and a half minutes, Chie submits Mocha uh, in the most opening match. In the most opening match that ever opened. <laughs> And uh, Chie, though, calls out Mia Coco after, uh, after what happened at Summergate and wants her to s decide as soon as possible that if she should continue uh, supporting Lady C or if she should uh, stay with uh, or, or she should move on to Chie and uh, find a new apprentice that she can uh, truly believe in. So I guess the, uh, the, the challenge has been, kind of been thrown here to Miyako Matsumoto to... Uh, determine uh if if she's going to continue with her her tutelage of lady c or move on to chie uh the newly for the newly named team ai princess of uh now ishikawa and yuki arai of course the tag team name was pending last time now they have their name ai princess they're talking about tonight being the first real challenge for them as a tag team as they're taking on uh one of the top teams in idol fight project of uh mari koto uh, they're looking to uh, be successful today and move forward. And so they get that match. Great heat and decent wrestling. But in just over 11 minutes, Kohaku ends up submitting uh, now Ishikawa and uh, getting the win from Mari Koto there. Once again, cementing themselves as one of the top teams of, uh, of, of Idol Fight Project. So, I mean, at least they carried this match. Uh, doesn't look like uh, Yuki or now <laughs> <laughs> doing all that fantastic uh i feel like there's a certain point i'm gonna have to start cutting the fat from from some of this where it's just like you know what i realized i don't need to use these people i feel like there's it's gonna happen to some of these people uh i'll have to figure that out uh, we get a six-woman tag match coming up, and uh, one of the teams, May Saruga, Asahi, and now Kakuta coming out to greet the crowd and uh, talk about Summergate and uh, how that went. And May is excited because she did have her big win against Momoka Hanazono at Summergate, and she's looking forward to uh, a win here today teaming with uh, Asahi and now Kakuta. And it looks like they all did pretty well, even though it only got a 39 uh let's see here so we get them those three they're going to be taking on the team of ram kaicho momika hanazono and yuna mizumori great heat and good wrestling goes right under the nine minute mark as uh, asahi takes uh yuna and submits her there's a lot of submissions should i start specifying pinfalls because there's been nothing but fucking submissions tonight <laughs> it's all been submissions uh, nonetheless, uh, Asahi May Saruga and now getting the victory here. Let me see here. May doing the best, uh, Ram right behind her, as I assume. Now kakata has got a 46. That ain't too bad at all. She's, she's carrying, she's carrying a decent bit of the load there. Asahi's really the lowest one there along with Momoka, but I feel like that will, uh, that will change with age. We'll see. And experience. <clears throat> Momoka grabs a mic before May could leave and uh, basically says, well, you know what? We've had two matches against each other. It's one and one. And, uh, you know, that seems to state that we still haven't really settled anything between the two of us. And we got one more match to decide this rivalry. And, you know, maybe we won't do it uh, here in the next couple of events, but um, maybe at uh, maybe uh, next month they'll have uh, some sort of some sort of match we'll have to find out uh either way momoka says they're not they're not done yet they have one more match between the both of them to decide this rivalry and uh we'll see how that goes uh let me see here ba, 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 ba. i'm just looking at some stuff all right we've got another big match here the veteran jungle kiona taking on one of the up-and-comer saya kamitani uh, Sai has never been one to shy away from some of the bigger challenges here in Idol Fight Project. An exceptional match, by the way. Kiona 
ends up uh, in just over just over 15 minutes hitting the diving splash on uh, Saya. Does she have the? I wonder if she has the muscle buster, or whatever she calls her her version of it that looks like it snapped someone's neck. Uh, either way, that's a 61. She carried the shit out of this match. And a uh, fantastic match between Kiona and Saya. Of course, Saya did quite good, okay, uh, quite okay as well with a 45. Um, so either way, did quite well. Jungle Kiona um, gets the better of Saya here, proving uh, the, I guess the uh, the veteranship, uh, winning at least in this particular match. And uh, as she celebrates, Hikari Noah comes out. Uh, she's got a microphone. Congratulates Kiona on beating her at Summergate. Uh, but she says this isn't over between the both of them. And in fact, Hikari is uh, considering fa- uh, challenging uh, Kiona to something that maybe Hikari's best at. You know, Hikari, uh, she loves the weapons. She loves the death matches, the hardcore matches. Maybe this should uh, maybe this should uh, have Jungle Kiona go into a match that she's not used to having uh, against Ikari Noah. So leaves it there as we oh my god with malware bites fuck off uh, leaves it there as we get to our next bit where the Sleep Train Angels come out and uh, they've been told that they have a match uh, but the opponents were just two X's no idea who it was. And we get the tag team debut of uh, the Queens of Kanpai. Oh, I should have put QOK. Oh, well. The Queens of Kanpai, Session Moth Martina, and Natsu Sumire. They've had a, a decent history, uh, several year history with, with each other. And uh, come out dancing with drinks and, and alcohol. Zero rated match. Yeah, to be fair, this is probably not going to go well. We'll see what happens. But nonetheless, um, offering booze to uh, Raku and Unagi. Uh, and they said, well, if they don't want to do it right now, that's fine. They should join them afterwards for drinks. And uh, we get to the uh, the debut match of the Queens of Kanpai. It got a 50. Shit. Look at that. Session Moth Martina got a 60. Natsu Samira got a 58. Holy shit. Martina and Natsu carried this fucking match. <laughs> and that's even with Unagi and Raku still not working well as a team ever, ever, ever. That's going to be great. They're going to be like the highest. They're going to be like the highest uh, experienced team who just have no chemistry working with each other. Yeah, and they jump. Well, to be fair, uh, 10 and a half minutes, fantastic heat and great wrestling. Uh, Saiko Unagi ends up uh, rolling up Natsu Samire with a surprise cradle. And, uh, you know, after some shenanigans with uh, Natsu and Martina, uh, end up getting uh, rolled up by Unagi. And that's, that's pretty much it for them. They don't seem to care all too much, but, uh, you know bit of a bummer but they're still planning on going to the bars to drink after mia momono coming out of course she won her uh three-way dance at summer gate calls out momo watanabe she says well obviously we weren't gonna have it right now uh with how close it was but the next time they have an event in just under three weeks at the next live stage calling out momo watanabe to face her uh, and defend that and 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 uh, put up her uh, her uh, royal spirit title in the match that Mio Mono, Momono has earned. So Momo knows that Mio is talented, but uh, she says that you know uh, Mio's just not going to be talented enough to beat her, and it's just gonna she's gonna go down like every other person who has faced Momo thus far in her reign, losing. And so that at least sets up for the next live stage. Uh, we pretty much know the main event already of Momo Watanabe defending the Royal Spirit Championship against Mio Momono. Spirit title. There we go. All right. We've got that taken care of. 
And uh, there we go. We get to our main event, Michiko Miyagi and Himika Arita. They had a, a, a confrontation at Summer Gate that got, uh, got a little out of hand, but here they are for their match. It had a 30-minute time limit uh, attached to it, like most matches that we have here. Uh, unfortunately, this one went to the 30 minute time limit and we did not get a winner. We got a time limit draw, uh, at the 30 minute mark, which is a real shame because both of them put on a fantastic performance here. 64 for the rating. That's one of our best matches, I think. Um, so the bell rings, the time limit has expired. Neither woman was able to get the win there. Uh, as they both start to recover, they start continuing to hit each other trading blows uh, until the bell keeps ringing and, uh, and the rest of the younger crew comes in to uh, separate them as uh, that is how the show ends with uh, Himika and Miyagi uh, still at each other even after 30 minutes. 61! Hot damn. All right. So Jungle Kiona will get some praise for carrying her match. Uh, let's see here. And you know what? Michiko and Himiko will get their praise for, uh, their, their 30 minute, their 30 minute match. Very happy. Seemed pleased and was pleased. All right. There you go. I think the difference between seemed pleased and was pleased is actually, um, something that, uh, shows up on the, on the deal here. You should look at top 10 matches. Yeah. Between both companies. <laughs> top 20 matches here. <laughs> it is kind of funny because you can already see uh, very much uh, a pattern. Mika, Iwata, Himika. Mika and Ram. Mika and Ram. Mika and Saya. Mika, Himika. Now Momo, Miyagi, and Neko. Mika... Or no, uh, Miyagi and Rina Yamashita, Momo and Himika, Mika and Miyagi, Mika and Saya, <laughs> Momo and Mika, Momo and Mei, <laughs> Miyagi and Mika, <laughs> and then now right there, the Miyagi and Himika. So I guess I should be using Mika Iwata for a lot of these big matches. I think uh, I think that's uh good way to uh, determine that there two separate events on the same month where she faced uh, Himika and then Sayakami Tani pulled out two of her top five best matches uh, top 100s come yeah, on matches Eddie Edwards, Mike Bailey, Eddie Edwards, Tyree, Tommy Mercer, AR Fox, Mike Bailey, Davidson, Mike Bailey, Neon Ninjas, AR Fox, Tate Twins. That just happened. The End, Tankman and Lamar, Rascals, Tate Twins, Rascals, Heath, Effie, Eddie, Tommy Mercer, and The End. Tankman and Lamar, Tate Twins, Rascals, Tyree, Ricky Starks. So. There's a little bit of a parody there. Obviously, we don't have a Mika Awada that's putting up the 70s right now, but, you know, we're still putting up some good numbers. Uh, all right, let's see here. Viewing figures, 7,500 people. Let's see here. So we got the Idle Pro, 491. That's pretty good. Uh, Taylor Wilde hangs her boots up. Mark Sterling. CZW hired Daria Baronado. Wow. All right, we're at 12:30. I'm gonna end the week and then probably call it good because at this point, just call it a day. Call it a night so I can go sleep and uh be good in that regard. All right. Anything here? Chihiro Hashimoto broken ribs. Well, thank God I'm not using her right now. Aristico. Is that the is that the original Sin Cara? The original Mystico? Uh, better known as Mystico or Sin Cara. Okay, so that's the original Mystico, the original Sin Cara. 
Got it. Stardom Tag Team Edition. Apple, Miyuki, and Suzu Suzuki. Oh, boy. Bob Murdoch leaves the business crash. Okay, so nothing really going on here. Uh, wow, that's an old, old Stardom logo. Watch the next thing that happens. Is Asuka gone? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, all right, so save that right there. We're through the first week. We're through the majority of uh, events. I believe we'll have two more live stages to go for this this month to hopefully hit be able to continue a streak of uh, three three event shows. We'll see how that hits our uh, hits our finances. And then, of course, we got our big event, Damnation, that we have everything pretty much pre-booked for in that regards. Uh, you know, we got Heath Miller versus JT Dunn, Mike Bailey versus AR Fox. Uh, let's see. Ricky Starks and Matt Cardona for the Heritage title in a no DQ match. Ryan Davidson and Drew Parker in a street fight. The Neo Body Guys, the Tate Twins, the Neon Ninjas in a three-way dance for the number one contendership to the Vertigo Tag Titles. The End versus Tankman and Lamar for the Vertigo Tag Titles. And, of course, the main event, Anthony Mayweather defending the Vertigo World Title against diehard Eddie Edwards. So we've got that all taken care of. Uh, we don't have much going on with uh, the pre-booking here. All we know is uh, our main event at the next uh live stage for idol pro will be momo watanabe defending the royal spirit championship against mio momono so we have got that to look forward to we've got that all taken care of and there you go so the next time i stream this it'll be the end of the month and we'll have the three events to book there and there you go finance wise uh we'll see what happens we still got to get through the whole month uh vertigo how are we doing here 10 grand we're gonna make another 16 on sponsorship plus whatever we get on tickets maybe which might not be huge plus merchandise it's gonna come close as far as uh how much it's gonna cost us uh we will have four grand here because we're uh broadcasting the show uh workers are going to be up a little bit as well i think we're probably going to spend more on workers this month than we did last month so we'll see what happens uh i'll have to book that see and uh, get that taken care of and that'll be the next that'll be the next one so i'm going to bed i thank you guys for being here live who are watching this live if you're watching this on youtube uh after the fact in the vod i thank you for continuing to watch as well uh, with this, at least if you get to this point and you don't just watch the, uh, I mean, hopefully the chapters that I always put in work. So, you know, just go straight to the chapters of that. So if you get to there, all right, thank you. I appreciate, uh, appreciate you continuing to watch and Hey, I will see you guys next time.